What's shaking, gang? Uh, just, uh, just tightening up my little microphone here. So as we talked about last time, I did a little capital investment and bought a new microphone for that goes on the uh, the iPhone because I shoot most of my videos on my iPhone. And uh, so to see if it improves the sound quality. So hopefully it has improved the sound quality for your listening enjoyment. I can't do anything about my voice. It's what I was born with. But I could talk very low like that, but we won't bother. <laughs> so um, this is uh, the, your second free live workshop that I'm holding as part of a pre-camp blitz. And uh, this blitz might last longer than one week because I was over in the Shutout Academy. Um, we have a private Facebook group. So I'm not, Goalie Training Lab is a private Facebook group as well um, where we're running the Butterfly Challenge right now. But the Shutout Academy's private Facebook group is only for pe members of the Shutout Academy, um, which is the um, comprehensive off-ice goalie training program. It has mobility, strength, speed, stamina. Everything you need is in there. It's a, it's a buck to try it for a week if you're interested. That's at shutoutacademy.com. Anyway. I was over in there and um, so some of the goalies are starting to head into training camp and it's cool because we have um, like teenage goalies who are you know trying to move from double A AA to triple A or triple A to junior hockey. We have um, a couple guys who are getting ready for PTOs like professional tryouts, um, some guys that play pro in Europe, um, some guys some guys and girls who play um, college some at lots of adult league goalies but, and so they're all in there in a community and really supporting one another and it's 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 fantastic it's one of the things I love the most about training goalies and why I've dedicated my career to doing it because um because you're so, so supportive of one another one another we're like a we're like a team so it's very cool but anyway some of the goalies are starting their tryouts and one of the goalies um you know it's like oh tonight was the first night of tryouts and Man, the other two goalies are both like six foot two, and and this guy's not, he's not tiny, you know. He's, he's like, all the other guys are six foot two, and they're monsters, and you know, and 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 he knew what he was doing, but, um, you know, it's it. So then that gave me the idea anyway that, I think next week I'll do a couple of things on, hey, you know what? Here, here's how to stand out at tryouts, and here's how to sort of keep keep a level head and you know but ultimately you can only control what you can control worrying about them isn't going to make them magically shrink <laughs> maybe you know and if they're a six foot two amazing awesome athlete goalie uh you know that consistently stops more pucks than you do then how can you argue they earned that job more than you did um and you know uh i think we're getting away from the time when just like the big blob guy shows up and he gets the job because because uh, he's big you know but I know it still happens sometimes, but still worry about what you can control. Anyway, what we're here to talk about today is um, the aerobic deficit uh, effect. So, hi, Andrej, how are you? So, um, you know, and it's, and people say this as a joke. I don't know, you can give me a thumbs up if you feel the same way as I do, because I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm the third worst goalie in the world. We go out on Sunday mornings and play shinny. But still, like people as a joke will be, so we <laughs> we were doing power skating in the summer and um, and then we do a little scrimmage. So on the last day of power skating, our power skating instructor, he couldn't show up because he had uh, something else he had to do. So we just went out and um, did a little skate at the start on our own and then played sh uh, shinny. So at the end, one of the other, one of the skaters said to me, oh, did you like that skate at the start? And I was like, yeah, that was fine. And she's like, well, you must have really liked it because at least you got some, a, some exercise and like a skate and like you got to exercise, like playing shinny, <laughs> like actually playing goal wasn't really exercise because all you do is stand there, right? You do you guys know that? <laughs> um, so yeah, I know I can't flip the screen, Chris, because then I don't see if I'm in this shot. It's okay. Don't worry, boss. I'll talk you through it. You're, you're the guy that looked ahead in the in the math homework book, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, you know, because, I mean, sometimes what you guys do looks spectacular, but a lot of times it looks like what you're just standing there and you're just moving a little bit side to side. It's easy. And it's, in a way, it's true. It's true that goalies don't cover the same linear distance. 
Uh, don't hit the same speeds because we're not really getting a chance to get to top speed very often. You know, maybe if you have to skate uh, to the bench on a delayed penalty. Um, you're not getting smashed. You're not battling for the puck in the corners. I mean, you're battling, but you're not, um, you know, getting smashed as much or consistently as skaters. But still, there's that incredible onset of fatigue. So, you know, the, the play comes in your end. Uh, maybe you make the first save or two saves, you feel good, you're moving in your crease, you're crisp, you're powerful, you got it dialed in, and then like the polar bear jumps on your back and your legs turn to jelly and then your brain and your legs are battling like, um, like your brain's saying, no, like we gotta, we gotta be there and your legs are like, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, they turn, they turn to jelly, which is frustrating. And then you get into that desperation that's like just, you know what, please somebody fire the puck out of the zone because this puck is going to end up in the back of the net just because I'm my legs won't behave. <laughs> so do you guys, like, it, am I talking about something that you understand and appreciate? I, or, like, is it? am I the only one that gets tired? Maybe none, no one else gets tired. But <laughs> so... Uh, so we want to try to put off the jelly leg and we want to help you understand um, how that how that happens and why it works so here here's where it's important that I see the screen because then I can move in and make sure you guys can see oh, I know it's backwards again totally cool okay my, Mike knows what I'm talking about um, so we're gonna start just by going over the energy systems and this is like super readers digest version um, like I was saying the other day um, when we did the mobility one, like uh, like I took probably five courses through university just studying this stuff. Um, you know, I studied a, a full entire course just looking at how skeletal muscle works. <laughs> you know, so but this is this is all you need to know. Uh, I'm just gonna pop this up a bit so we get you good. So we basically have three energy systems, and this is a percent of energy produced from that system over time. Um, don't get the idea that, oh, so right now I'm using 100% this system, and then at this time I use 100% this system, and then I use that system. You're always using all three systems. It's just going to be different proportions, and again, this is a simplification. So we're going to say that I start off, and I'm, like, and again, think of what are, we evolved not to play hockey. <laughs> we evolved to like basically stay alive. So it's like we're just chilling, loving life, and a lion jumps out of the jungle. <laughs> and we're like, ah! And we get up and we just start booting. So that's what I want you to picture. A guy wearing just a... I know the image is backwards, Chris. Did you just join here? Because the camera's flipped, so the image is going to be backwards. But I'm going to talk you through it, so don't worry. It's okay. Um, so... We jump out of the, the lion jumps out. Now I'm just right. Lion jumps out. We take off. So we're using our anaerobic alactic system. This is like this is why we should all have just been hundred meter sprinters, because this is basically free energy and it lasts about ten to twenty seconds. Maybe not even. <laughs> That's okay, Chris. I'm just teasing anyway. Um, so um, <laughs> that's free energy. It's just like in our body, and you probably heard of. Oh, well, you've heard of creatine. Yeah, we don't. Oh, yeah, we have creatine right here. You've heard of creatine. So why people take creatine is because it just helps replenish this anaerobic alactic system. In your muscles, and people like the science the other day, so I'm going to talk a little bit science again. In your muscles, you have um, creatine and a phosphate, and they bind together. This initial system, uh, well, let me read backtrack again, too. So in the mobility one, if you missed it, go back and watch it. It's going to be somewhere, like you just have to scroll down a little bit because there's been posts since then to find the mobility one. But we talk about the actin and the myosin and the cross bridges and they swivel and that's what makes your muscle contract. So, um, but what your muscle needs to um, unhook kind of and to swivel back is a phosphate molecule, and which is weird, but it's true. So that phosphate molecule, or what it needs to sort of, yeah, to make that cross bridge, is a phosphate molecule. So in the muscle, you have creatine bonded to a phosphate. So the, the energy molecule is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. 
when it uh, when when it gives up one of its phosphates to help with that cross bridge linking, then it becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate, so triphosphate diphosphate. But it needs to be triphosphate to make the swivel go. So the creatine phosphate in your muscle cell is like, uh, you can have my phosphate. So then that phosphate jumps right back on the ADP, makes it ATP, and then we can go. So it's like, it's fast and it's free. It's like, there is a lion that just jumped out. <laughs> so away you go, boom, and you're gone. So the lion is actually pretty hungry, so he's still chasing you. So you've been running 10, 20 seconds, really 10 seconds. This is like, this is done. Um, and it takes about three minutes to replenish to about 95%, three minutes of rest to replenish to about 95% of its original or 99% of its original thing. So that's where creatine phosphate comes in. You get creatine if you eat red meat in your diet, you're gonna have enough creatine, but um, it, it just, if people don't eat a lot of red meat, then it helps sort of top it up. It won't super saturate, it won't store extra because you have extra, you just pee it out, but it just makes it so it's available. So anyway, you're still chucking. So now, so now you're going to go into your anaerobic lactic system. So again, do you see how these these are your two anaerobic systems? They start producing force pretty um, energy pretty quickly. The problem with this one is, uh oh, it creates lactic acid. So it produces energy pretty quickly, but there's a pretty big price to pay, and that's in the form of lactate. And so you're gonna start getting jelly legs. So see here where this um, anaerobic lactic system starts to fail? Um, that's when we're like, we are in trouble. And this is where, yeah, this is the jelly leg syndrome. Uh, this is where your, your brain is telling your legs when your legs are like, I can't, I can't. You know, and, and then uh, we're a little bit screwed for, for that until we get a bit of a rest and we can recover and keep going. Um, so if you've ever run a 400 meter run, if you never have, go out and do it so you know it, but not if you haven't sprinted since high school, because you'll tear your hamstring or your rupture your Achilles or something dire will happen, I know it. But if you're like fit and you routinely sprint, go out and run a 400 meter at the track as fast as you can, and you'll, you'll know exactly when this happens. This happens about, uh, so you start on this, at the bottom of the straight, you run the straight, you do the first curve, and then you're coming into the second curve, you're maybe just into the second curve, uh, around 300 meters, and yeah, somebody drops like a cement block inside a full refrigerator on your back, and you're just like, Ugh! and you're like, <laughs> you're going so hard, but you know like your legs are just like, eh, like that. So that's that's that very unpleasant zone uh so but we're still going because the lion's still chasing us and then we get into our aerobic system so our aerobic system can produce a lot of energy but it takes time uh and it's not yeah it's not that fast so um you know we can't just like some people be like well i'm just gonna go out and sprint a mile well you can't sprint a mile you can run a mile hard but you can't you know once you get to sort of two minutes your sprinters are going to be done and you're just going to be going steady state around your threshold so um, this is sort of your aerobic threshold when your energy demands go above that then you have to go anaerobic but if you keep trying to go anaerobic then your lactate's going to build up and it's going to push you back down because your system just can't keep up with that it can't clear the waste products fast enough and it forces you to slow down by turning your legs into cement basically yeah nice eh <laughs> so um so that's how that works so why do you guys fatigue faster than everybody else? Why, why can't you go for like two minutes really hard, you know, and, and well, two minutes really hard never feels good, but why can't you keep pushing? Why do you, why do you seem, seem to hit that threshold a little bit sooner? The answer is, and I'm, I think this is, the, this is the answer that when I apply the physiology of it and the biomechanics of it and the anatomy of it, this is the answer that I have for you. It's your equipment. It's your equipment's fault. It's not me, it's my equipment. So, and I think in particular, it's, it's your pads and probably your glove and your blocker because they are, your chesty has a mass as well, but it's around your torso. It's where you're most efficient to carry that mass. Whereas um, your pads are further out on your extremities. Let me just grab a little weight here and show you what I mean. 
so I'm gonna move you back here. See again, this I'm sorry that the that the board is backwards, but this is why, so that I can move around and make sure that I'm still in the shot and see it. But yeah, I know it's sort of annoying. But so I can hold this weight here. This weight doesn't change, right? It's gonna be 10 pounds no matter where I hold it. So I can hold it here fine and it doesn't actually feel that bad at all. But if I move it away from my axis of rotation, that's, that's heavy, you know, and now I'm fatiguing and I'm not gonna be able to hold it there very much longer without cheating because it's getting further and further away from the axis of rotation. So if you think of your pads on your legs, you know, the dis here's an example. In the military, hey Ty, what up? Tyler just came in, he's wearing sunglasses. He looks like a rock star, Hello. really, pretty much, yeah. Say hi. What up? So anyway, uh, oh, you got a thumbs up, Tyler. Do we have any love for Tyler? I'm gonna give Tyler a heart. No, no love for Tyler. That's okay, he's used to it. Um, so um, in the military, they talk about a, a pound on your feet is worth five pounds on your torso. You got another thumbs up, but no love, homie, sorry. Is worth five pounds on your torso. So what that means is, if my, for every pound my boots, if I'm in the army, like my boots are heavier, I, I could, it's the equivalent of adding five more pounds to my rucksack. So if we think of the, of the, your pads on your legs, I mean, I know pads are way, way lighter than they used to be, but I'm pretty sure there's no pads that are less than a pound out there right now. So, um, so that is adding more and more load to it. Also consider the move, moving those legs, because really they're, you're moving from your hip joint, so that's a pretty long distance. I know your pads come up over your hip, but the majority of the weight is distal to your hip, or, or half the weight at least, well, all the weight is distal to your hip. So there's an added load, just like when I held the weight here, it was easy, but when I held it out there, it was really, really heavy. It was a lot more work on my muscles. So now you've got, you got one love. So now you've got all that weight, and you're, you're, your engine's revving at a higher load. If I, if I sat in the car and rev my engine at, at high, even though I'm not moving, I'm gonna be burning more gas. Um, you know, think of like, pick up your goalie bag. <laughs> think of, just pick it up and carry it around for an hour and, and see if you've used any energy or if you feel fatigued. Now try to do some like lateral micro hurdle drills or some up downs with that bag like you'd be burned, right? It's so much harder than if you were just, you know, walking around for an hour without that load or doing a few up downs. So my point is this, you guys, even when you're just in the net, even when the play's at the other end of the ice, you guys are probably still working about here. You know, you're using up all this energy already working, so then, when you start, you know, having to actually do stuff and move and make saves, this area under the curve is a lot smaller than all of this area under the curve. So you're going to burn through that anaerobic alactic and anaerobic lactic systems that much faster. And these are pretty short systems to use up before you get driven back down into your aerobic system. Does that make sense? Can you just give me like a yeah or a thumb or something like that if it makes sense? Because it's kind of a crucial, it's a crucial point. <laughs> so that, that is the aerobic deficit, that you're already revving your engine higher than everyone else, just even when the play's at the other end. Even when you're just standing there, you're already using a good portion of that capacity before you get into that anaerobic system and start getting the leg burn, okay? So I saw lots of thumbs up, so you guys are with me. And that makes sense, but you don't think of it, right? Because, you know, you put it all on and it feels kind of bulky, but if you think of it just like, I'm gonna just carry my bag around and I'm gonna do my, my workouts. Thank you, Jeremy, it's good. Um, 
So now I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're thinking, because I've worked with goalies a long time, and I know you pretty well, and you come up with some wacky ideas. Um, you are thinking, um, half of you are thinking, so I should wear a weight vest when I do all my training. I know I'm right. You don't even have to give me a thumbs up, because I know I'm right. The other half of you are even craftier, and you're thinking, I should strap weights to my legs when I do my workouts, and that will help. You would both be wrong. Number one, with the weight vest, you would be wrong because I know you'd grab the heaviest weight vest you could find. You'd go to the, like, whatever fitness store and be like, this is only 45 pounds. You have a 70-pound, you know, <laughs> weight vest, um, which would end up just slowing you down when you're trying to be explosive and do your off-ice agility and stamina training. Uh, the thing about adding weights to your legs is, uh, just getting a little notice I'm clearing. Um, the thing about adding weights to your legs is that that's going to change your whole biomechanics. It's not going to replicate the weight distribution not from your pads. And again, it's just going to sort of throw you off, change forces on your body, change how you use muscles, and it could do more harm than good. So don't do either of those. Sometimes we do use like a 15 pound weight vest or even a 20 pound weight vest for specific types of training, but uh, let's not, that's really not the solution. The solution is, number one, you need to get on the ice. And I don't mean you need to be on the ice all summer. Um, I don't mean you need to be on the ice five days a week. I just mean you need to be on the ice sort of once or twice during the summer, a week during the summer. And then as it gets closer to camp, ramp it up a little bit because nothing, 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 nothing <laughs> um, will replace the, the feeling of being on the ice and moving with your equipment. And to try to do that off the ice, I think is a little bit silly because you're, you're not making the best use of your off ice training time when you can kind of increase your envelope. So spend, spend that time on the ice, you know, moving and working in, in your equipment. Um, then I guess the, so then from, from my perspective, from the off ice perspective, you want to build stamina um, in your big muscles, which I think those of you who are training actually do pretty well, but it's your small muscles that are going to get you. Uh, it's it's going to, you know, and I, and you've probably felt it because I hear it all the time. Um, you know, guys will go on the ice before they start the program. They'll go on the ice and they'll be like, yeah, like my hip just cramps when I get in a certain position and it just feels like it's going to give out. And, you know, so it's not like, and sometimes our quads obviously are going to be shaking and exhausted, but it's not like, oh yeah, my glutes are fatigued like crazy. It's like, it's more like, oh yeah, there's that little muscle or like the outside of my lower leg is just burning. Um, and that's the limiting factor because it's a smaller muscle. It doesn't get trained if you're just doing squats, um, leg press, knee extension, hamstring. You're not training any of that stuff. It actually, um, we had uh, one of our shutout academy goalies. He described it perfectly. He was a very fit guy, very diligent with his training. He had done like a CrossFit type training before. And, you know, his his back, his glutes, his quads were all super strong. Um, he, he actually started just doing the butterfly challenge and actually found that he was able to get into his reverse VH position a lot better and thought, oh, you know, like he didn't even realize. Like he was very happy with his results he was getting from his training, but he thought, man, I might give this a try and just see see what the whole training package is like. Um, so he joined the Shutout Academy and, you know, he was like within two weeks, like my teammate, like my, I felt it. He's like, my teammates were coming up to me. Like I was just making saves I'd never saved before. I was quicker on the ice because again, he's he's not just using those big muscles. He's got that stability and that smart and the stamina in those little muscles so that he can get in the position he needs to be in and hold it for a sustained period of time. So um, so you need to get after your smaller muscles too. And then you need to work on your vertical agility. So that going from, um, from your knees to your feet, your knees to your skates, that is a huge energy demand. Um, and so that's, and you guys do it a lot. So that's something that we need to work on as well so that your body is used to that. So I think, I think we'll leave my lovely picture and uh, we'll head into the back gym and we'll do a little demo so I can show you. Again, 
this is just uh, a snippet. It's not like, oh, here's everything you should do. Um, it's just a little snippet to help you understand the, how we apply this principle and how we can do some training to help uh, minimize it. We're never going to make it so that you're always going to be tired at the end of the game. It's just that you're going to be moving faster, more explosively, um, moving, um, yeah, faster and more explosively, but at a lower percentage of your threshold. Okay, let's go in the back, Jim, and we'll do some practical stuff. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There's a little wall of fame here. Can you see it? All right, here we are in the back, Jim. So it's just to finish up on that other thought, it's like, uh, you know, when you say Bolt runs a 400 meter race, he's still exhausted. It still feels terrible. He's just gone way faster than anybody else has gone. Hey, I'm gonna uh, invite. I'm gonna invite Instagram to join in. Just give me one second.
Um, okay, so this would be a little bit more of a goalie-specific stamina thing. But again, it's it's not. You're never going to eliminate that aerobic deficit. You're just going to increase your body's capacity to deal with it. Going full out is always going to be hard. Um, because it's full out, but as you get more fit and more strong, and more importantly, more goalie fit and strong, your top level is that much faster, that much more explosive. It also means that then when you're just doing more like routine saves, you're using less energy. It actually takes you less energy to go from this post to the top of your crease, because you don't have to push with as much effort. So. You're sparing energy there, but if you have to make a post-to-post -post desperation save, uh, you have more speed and power to get there on time. Again, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense, or if that just confused you. Please ask a question so I can answer it, because I really want these free online workshops to be just that, that where you can ask me questions and I'm gonna answer them for you. I really wanna help set you up well heading into the season. So here's this example. We're going to do a little knee recovery. Um, we're going to do a knee recovery, lateral push, back and forth. Then we're going to do some post reaches. Then I'm going to do alternate knee recovery. So you can see where this is at, uh, getting in that vertical agility. So I'm going from a knee down position. And I'm trying to use good position too. So I don't want to be kind of sitting back like this when I'm here because I don't want to be there on the ice. I want to be up and have my torso forward a little bit. And then I'm going to do a nice knee recovery, lateral push. I might come back down to one or both knees. Push. I'm just going to push, keeping nice, strong torso. One more back. And then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do my post reaches. And I'm going to stay nice and low. And I'm actually going to think, hey, where should my stick be? Where should my glove be when I'm covering those posts? And I'm just staying low, building that stamina in my legs but also getting that stamina in my hip in different positions. Then I'm gonna come right into alternate knee recovery, keeping my body nice and quiet. So, and there are a million ways we can manipulate those variables to make it more speed oriented, more stamina oriented, but I think you can appreciate how that's gonna give you more bang for your buck going to give you more survival power in the net than you know hopping on hopping on the bicycle <laughs> and smashing away um, actually I had a medicine ball here too because I think on those post reaches it would be fine to hold a medicine ball to add a little bit of overload or even for that whole sequence to wear like a 15 pound um, weight vest would be totally totally cool no problem at all so, I think that's it. And uh, this will probably happen again. It, I was a little bit surprised after Tuesday's mobility one at the number of private messages I got or comments of people asking, um, hey, could you design me, a mo that was really awesome, could you just design me a program, a stretching program that I can do every day? And I think I'm gonna probably get the same, hey, could you just design me a, stamina workout so that I can get those benefits. And I can, uh, it's called the Turning Pro Coaching Program. It's not cheap, it's uh, $3,000 for the year US. It's actually gonna be going up to four, but, uh, and it's by application. So if, that, if you wanna know about that, you can private message me if you're really serious about it. But the alternative actually I think is better again is just, I know I talk about it all the time, but it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's a shout out academy. Uh, it's just at shutoutacademy.com. You can try it, the whole program. Mobility, the strength, the speed, the stamina, everything for a week for only a buck. So if you, if you don't like it or you don't do it, just unsubscribe and that's it. You know, really, like you paid a buck. <laughs> so, uh, but that's, yeah, that's your, but unfortunately I can't just design custom programs for everybody because that's what I do in the gym. That's my full-time job in the gym and, and what I do with my private online clients. But that's a, a really affordable way to get that type of attention. And then you can ask questions in the private Facebook group for the Shutout Academy. So uh, that's how that works. We're gonna do another one of these this week. There are three free online workshops. The next one is gonna be on Saturday. Uh, I'm not really sure what time because Saturday is a big day. We gotta do a hill run with the hockey guys 
Well, Paul and I first have to get up and run eight miles, so we're gonna have to start running about 5.30 in the morning. Then, uh, hi Gerhard. Uh, then I have to go do Coach the Hill Run for the hockey guys. Then I have to do a video shoot down here to make some more uh, clips for you guys. And then I gotta visit my mom at some point. <laughs> So it'll be a busy day. I'm not really sure when I'll get that live done, but I'll I, just like I did with this one, I'll post on Instagram and here on the Facebook page around around what time it's going to go. There'll always be a replay link there for you. So I am going to check questions. Jeremy, what about one pound wrist weights for when doing balls at home to simulate the weight of your glove and your blocker? Same premise as the leg. Yeah, a little bit because Again, like the weight's gonna be at your wrist. It's not gonna be distributed on your hand. Um, I, would, I would just wear my glove and blocker probably, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I think the risk outweighs the reward. I remember, um, I remember this was like probably in the 90s. Um, but I think, it, I don't know if it was with the Magic or the Lakers, I think it was the Magic. And they had a big thing like, um, and, and <laughs> so, yeah, so they had a big thing about how they had these weighted basketballs. So they were the exact same dimension of the basketball, but they were heavy. And they had Shaq would like do free throws with these, uh, these weighted balls. And it was like, huh, that doesn't make sense, you know, because the limiting factor, you have to think like, what's the limiting factor in this? Is the limiting factor the weight or is the limiting factor the skill? If it's skill, you really don't want to weight it. Um, so really, too, then in that playoffs, like Shaq's free throw percentage was like brutal, like awful, 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 probably because he threw off his touch by using uh, those weights. Now, again, I know you, your gloves do have weight, but um, I would just be a little worried about the distribution. I think the best thing would be to wear your glove and your blocker um, when possible. But yeah, so then when I was a strength coach for the men's basketball team at Western, they had still had those weighted basketballs and everybody wanted to be shooting them and dunking them and it was like, ah! <laughs> um, but anyway, that's that. Any other questions? Two weeks ago I had ankle surgery to remove an infection that occurred in my left ankle. I'm healing faster than my doctors thought. My question is what? You know what, Mike, your question gets cut off when I look at it on my phone. Let me. Uh... Let me pull it up on my handy dandy computer so I can see. See, I've got everything here. I just have to refresh the feed. Um, but really, Mike, you know what? I know what my answer is going to be anyway. My answer is going to be um, you should go to physio and get physio to sort of guide you through at least the early stages. Make sure that, yeah, the swelling's there, the scar's healing well, you're getting full range of motion, um, and then progressing you along. So that, that actually is going to be my answer. Um, which is good because my computer's being really slow getting online anyway. Would love to read about this later, hoping you'll make it available. Yeah, Lucas, this replay will be posted right here. Uh, as soon as we're done, I'll just repost it. It'll be on this Goalie Training Pro page on Facebook. Uh, I'll leave it up for like a week or so, and then I'll take it down because, again, you know that I love action takers. I like to reward action takers. I don't really, not that I don't like, but I'm not really talking to people who are just mindlessly collecting information. Uh, I want people who are actually passionate about it and going to actually use the information to make themselves better. So I'll leave it up for about a week, and then I'll take it down. Uh, okay, I think that's it gang, so you guys have an awesome day, go get it, and uh, I will catch you later on. Um, on Saturday we're talking about, oh, the eccentric advantage, that's a good one, you'll want to catch that one. It's about how you can get um, stronger, faster, and more well while reducing your risk of injury on the ice, so yeah, you'll like, you'll like that one. <laughs> okay, this is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com, see ya.